So we're going to talk about L'Hopital's rule and the indeterminate form. So let's start by talking about 0 over 0. This does not equal 1. 0 over 0 is what is called the indeterminate form. And just so that we're very clear about how I feel about this, I sob uncontrollably when people write 0 over 0 equals 1. Okay, so we have seen the indeterminate form with limits. And just as a reminder, if you have something like the limit of x, the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of x over x, if I try plugging that in, well, then I get 0 over 0. And so that gives me a, a sad face. And so when you get this 0 over 0, we have to get clever on what to do. And I have like this whole proof video, like this particular limit is kind of a crazy one because it's, it's a lot of work to figure out what this equals. This does equal one, but it's a lot of work to get there. And it doesn't equal one because this does not equal one. It equals one for a long list of, of reasoning. Okay, so zero over zero does not mean that the limit does not exist. So sometimes people see zero over zero and say, oh, it does not exist, we're good to go. And it really what it means is if you get zero over zero, it means you should really try something else. It's a lot of work to know whether the limit does not exist. Like if to actually prove that it requires a lot of work to really get there. Now, there are other indeterminate forms. So for instance, you can have infinity over infinity. Um, actually infinity times zero would be an indeterminate form. Infinity minus infinity would be an indeterminate form zero to the zero is in the list, and then also one to the infinity. So we have this whole list of indeterminate forms. Okay, now in the past, we tried these tricks to deal with limits. We've tried to like factor and cancel, or multiply by the conjugate, or simplify complex fractions, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We, we spent all this time developing all these techniques to kind of deal with the zero over zero problem. And now that we know some things about derivatives, I can finally tell you there is an easier way to do all of this. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> okay. So I want to talk about kind of all of these indeterminate forms at some point. But for now, where we're going to start is just with the the zero over zero form. So we're just going to focus on that and then I'll build up the other ideas in, in other videos. Okay. So just, I'll talk about these other formats in other videos. So just, just giving you the scope here. All right. So L'Hopital's rule. All right. So suppose that you have two functions F and G and they're differentiable on an open interval and that interval contains the point A and F of A and G of A equals zero. And the derivative of g does not equal zero if x does not equal a. So it's okay if it equals zero at a, but anywhere else it should it should not. Okay, so here is L'Hopital's rule. The limit as x approaches a of f of x over g of x is equal to the limit as x approaches a of f prime of x over g prime of x, assuming the limit on the right exists. This is great. This is awesome. In fact, we need a stick figure dance party for this. Let's bring them in. Woo! Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is very exciting to me. Uh, but what, okay, what does this even mean? <laughs> Let's go back to this. <laughs> so this is really telling you like an awesome trick that is so much faster than all of the other limit techniques that you've used. Really, you can just take the derivative of the top and bottom and then try to take the limit again. So it actually is a much simpler process, which is why we have the stick figure dance party. Yeah. Okay. So let's actually take a look at an example of how to use this. Okay. So as an example, so I've got the limit as x approaches zero of five x plus sine x over four x. And just as a really quick reminder, back in the day, when you were first learning limits and you didn't have derivatives at your disposal, you probably would have done this. And then you would have had to use the, the limit as X approaches zero of sine of X over X, but you'd have to manipulate this a little bit just to make this work. So this, this would require a little bit of work to figure this out. So, now I want to look at this from the lens of, of L'Hopital's rules. So let me clear this off. And so let's do what it says, i.e. let's, let's take the derivative of the top and the bottom. Okay. 
Um, oh, and by the way, notice also if you if you plug in zero, you do get zero over zero. So this is why we are using this. So that is that is a big thing. Okay, so all right, I set this up. Notice I've written down limit, and this is going to be five plus cosine x. That's the derivative of the top, and the derivative of the bottom is just four. So now notice if I plug in zero, I no longer get zero over zero, right? I get actually. If I, if I plug in zero now, so I get five plus cosine of zero over four, this will be just five plus one over four. So this is six over four, which is three over two. So boom, done. And so, yeah, that's, that's it. <laughs> that's, that's taking the limit. So it's, it's very, it's very handy, right? Okay. So let's go to another one. So notice once again, so the thing you want to notice before you, you get the party started here is that if you plug in zero, you get zero over zero. So since that happens, I previously would have had to use the conjugate on this, but now I can try L'Hopital's rules. So let's go ahead and take the derivative of the top. So this would be one half x plus, oops, sorry, uh, this would be one half four plus x to the negative one half. That would be the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom would be just, just be one. Okay, so sometimes when you do this, um, you're gonna have to finesse the derivative a little bit. And by that, I mean, you know, you might take the derivative one way and then you might wanna rewrite it to make it nicer to work with for your particular problem. So this whole thing, I can just simplify now to one over two times the square root of four plus X, because I just have this one in the denominator anyway. So this just all simplifies to this. And this I can plug zero into, right? This will be one over two times the square root of four plus zero. So it's just gonna be one over two times two. So it's just gonna be one over four. Oh my God, it's just so much easier. Isn't it great? <laughs> okay. so. Let's, let's take a look at another one now. This one's got a little bit of a plot twist, all right? So um, same idea, so if I plug in zero, I get zero over zero. Okay, cool, so let's go ahead and let's take the derivative of the top and the derivative of the bottom. Okay, so notice what happens if you plug in zero over zero. You'll get one minus one over really zero, so this is still zero over zero. So we have a problem here. Um, we did not actually get to the limit, but we can actually just use L'Hopital's rule again, okay? So let's do it again. Just take the derivative of the top, the derivative of the top. This will be now sine of x over 12x. And if I try to plug in zero, I still get zero over zero. Okay, so we're gonna take the derivative again. All right, so if I take the derivative again, then I'm gonna get cosine of x over 12. And now I can work with this, right? So now this is not gonna give me zero over zero. This is gonna give me cosine of zero over 12, which is just equal to one over 12. And so, you know, we had to take a few derivatives, but no problem. Okay, but wait, there are some things you need to watch out for. So you can use L'Hopital's rule over and over as long as you are still getting zero over zero. So you do wanna check for this. If you don't get zero over zero, you cannot keep using it. So I always say this as a, avoid going to computer mode where you're just calculating things without thinking about it. Okay, so here's what I mean. So I've got this, this example, and if I plug everything in, so I get one minus one over zero plus zero, so I ultimately get zero over zero. All right, so I can use L'Hopital's rule here. So I go ahead and I take the derivative. So it's gonna be negative sine x, really that's it, over one plus three x squared. So notice what happens now if I, if I tried to take, um, so, so let's just plug it in. So I would get really negative zero over one plus three times zero. So this really equals zero. So we're done with the limit. So the thing I guess I'm, I'm trying to tell you is 
you know, if you're in computer mode, you might look at this and say, oh, I want to just keep going with this. When in reality, you actually have enough to, to figure out what the limit is right then and there. But I notice every once in a while, someone just kind of keeps plowing through and taking derivatives until they get to a certain point. And you could not take L'Hopital's rule here, or you could not use it because what you're getting is zero over one. And you need zero over zero, or you need one of those indeterminate forms. So this ultimately does equal zero, so we're, we're good to go on that, but just a, a little warning there. Make sure you are kind of thinking these through. So one other thing, you can combine this idea with other limit knowledge that we have developed. So for instance, let's say I've got now a one-sided limit. So I've got the limit as x approaches zero on the right of three sine x over x squared. So I get that zero over zero thing and so notice what happens if I take the derivative here. So I get three cosine x over two x. So now you'll notice that what I get is if I, if I try to plug zero in, I get one over zero. So this is not the indeterminate form. We cannot go any farther with L'Hopital's rule, but because we're getting a zero in the denominator, this is really telling me that since I have a zero in the denominator and I do not have um, any other way to really simplify this, that means then I, I need to think about whether this limit is going to go to infinity or not. And if you're wondering how would you do that, so we can break this up into really two different issues. So we've got three cosine x and then we've got the other limit, one over 2x. So I'm really multiplying these two results together. So the top part is not a problem, right? This part here, this is just going to go to just three times one because cosine, cosine of zero is one. So the top is not an issue. It's this part here, and this is really an infinite limit. So then what you could do is, um, you know, I've, I've talked about this in, in lots of different videos. You can really make a, a table here just to kind of determine the behavior of this. So I just want to be on the right of zero, but very close to it. So then I can do this old, this old routine of just getting closer and closer to zero on the right side and just seeing what happens with this table. So I, I went ahead and just filled it in. So there are your, your values. So you can see that the closer you get to zero, the larger this gets. So the value of this whole guy here then is going to really positive infinity. Uh, that's a terrible looking infinity sign. I'm having trouble making infinities today for some reason. Okay, so you can really see what's happening here. So we've got three times infinity. Um, so the three is really inconsequential. So this would just equal infinity. That would be it, that would be the answer. Now, just as another note here, cause I, I did just grade a bunch of tests. It is a no-no to write three times infinity. You really can't do necessarily a, a calculation with infinity. So you really just kind of want to think about what's happening. So internally, this is probably what you're thinking, but I just want to caution you about like in calculus, you you're making formal mathematical arguments. So even though this is the way that you think about it, it is not the way that you can present it. And that that's a skill to really learn. Like you think about it one way, but you present it another way. That's like something that that's a good skill to have because even in the workplace, that's going to serve you. Okay, so that is the, the little intro to L'Hopital's rule. And I have more videos on this. I'll have example videos and then we'll, we'll talk about some of the other indeterminate forms. So if you thought this video was helpful, like it, pretty pretty please. Um, hit subscribe to my channel and you are always welcome to leave me a comment if you have any questions. All right guys, I'll talk to you next time. Thanks for watching.